and welcome everyone. This is the Astro Tarot Show and I am your celestial host, Serona Rose. And boy, oh boy, we are already at the end of the calendar year and we are looking at a new year, the year 2023. So what is, what is the energy? Well, it's going to be game changing. It really is. There's going to be a lot of planets that are shifting and changing signs and, <clears throat> excuse me. So there will be a little bit of um, some excitement, I would say. But I want to talk about the shift first. Like I stated in my past shows, I'm going to talk more about the energy of this upcoming year. Um, now, I want to start off with 2022. When we look at the year 2022, we're going to look in, in the tarot. Uh, this is the Astro Tarot Show, so we're going to bring out the tarot cards. Um, so, the number six is represented by the Lover's card, a card in the Major Arcana. And the number six is, it represents that duality. It represents the consciousness and the subconsciousness. And here we have, um, we have the conscious the man looking at the unconscious, the female, as she is looking at her, at, at divinity, at, at a higher, um, uh, this is an angel on this one, but it's that, how, that higher power, okay? So... When we have the number six itself, it is it is um, it's connected to compassion, um, nurturing. It's give and take, and um, then numbers. And we're going into the year number seven, which is considered a very spiritual number. Um, it is associated with the classical planets, the seven classical planets, which are also referred to as the seven heavens. We also have the seven um, wonders of the world. Um, and all of these so showing that seven is an important number in our world. So seven is, um, it is associated with intuition, um, mysticism, spirituality, um, with inner wisdom and strength. It's about psychic abilities, um, individualism. Um, it relates to overcoming obstacles and developments. So let's talk about um, the number six really quick and the, and the lover's card. So the lover's card is, you know, it's balance and it's harmony and it's beauty. And this is showing a, a, a duality here. And I'm not going to show this very much because of the fact that I will be showing this picture on other platforms, on other video platforms. And my videos have been tagged before um, because this is, there's nudity on this card. So anyway, the lover's esoteric name is the children of the voice of the divine. So um, also oracles of, oracles of the mighty. So <clears throat> we can see this is the the uh, dualism. This is the um, feminine and we have the masculine. And this card really, it, it tells us to, um, we have to be stronger than our distractions. And the year 2022 was full of distractions. And we're seeing more and more as the year begins to close of how much distraction that we were being fed. And if we are not focused or, and if we are not overcoming that, um, that animal nature, that instinctual nature that we can have as humans, if we don't overcome that, then that 
can make us unbalanced. So with the number six um, being about that, um, about that balance, this also goes into making choices and decisions. But again, you know, we have to, um, we have to um, understand what give and take is, and we can't give away to that instinctual animal side of ourselves, um, or that natural side. I don't want to really call it animal, but it's that instinct, that, that survival instinct. So in saying that, um, we can look at this past year and we can see that there was a lot of things that tried to grab our grab our attention to distract us from those things that are important you know that that mean to us and you know but in order to make those good sound decisions we have to be in a place of harmony within ourselves we can't be in fear we can't be um we can't be in that um fight or flight um, or freeze moment and make the correct decision. That's that instinctual decision. We have to make those balanced decisions that are in alignment with our higher self and those things that, you know, what we are working on. So then we go to seven, the number seven, which is the chariot card. Now the chariot card, this is grace under pressure. Um, and this is the hero. This is the fool um, on his journey. This is supposed to be him um, driving the um, driving the the um, carrier here. I can't even think of the name of it. But anyway, and here we go again. This is about taming our instinctual nature because you see the animals here, the sphinx that are. Um, they are chained, but it's about taming that, that instinctual nature and learning temperance, okay, and um, to maintain our poise and to conquer the, um, to conquer those, um, those challenges that we will experience in life. Um, this card is, um, it's sensitive and it's intuitive because he has no reins. Okay. Um, he has no reins. So this is, a, this is going into equilibrium, having that balance. And so the number seven, um, when we bring that into, when we bring that energy into the seven of numerology, numerology, um, we're seeing how more defined that it is. So we are learning that without balance, okay, without our inner balance, um, we can't, we, um, we become sacrificial and we become delusional because we're unsure when we are not grounded within ourselves we are we are not making those decisions that are the best thing for us so but being in balance allows us to um to listen to our inner voice right it allows us to listen to our inner voice and to go forward um, also using compassion and there's many elements on this card. This is, um, there's many, I mean, I could break down this card, but this is not a tarot class. So, um, but this is really something when we're going into this next year, um, this is a triumph of over life's obstacles. And, you know, this can be, this year is, um, it can be a catalyst for change and I do believe it will be. This is um, <clears throat> this is very um, the collective energy is is 
transformational as well. And this is not only for the inner self, this is also for the collective. Um, we have some of the movements with our planets. We'll finally have Pluto moving out of Capricorn into Aquarius. Now that's really going to change the energy. Um, and he'll be there for about three months and then he'll um, station and um, resume a retrograde motion. So, you know, we're going to be going back into Capricorn a little bit, going back over some of those decisions that we made. Then we also have Saturn that moves out of Aquarius and he moves into Pisces. So we can, this is where he is um, a little more relaxed here. This will be the end of restrictions and rules. Um, this is really about bringing our dreams to reality. Pisces is our dreams. It's our hopes and um, our wishes. And Saturn is, he will bring it down to earth. So <clears throat> he's going to bring, um, you know, he's going to help manifest the unmanifest. So that is, that is going to be a really good energy. And again, this is going to be for the individual as well as the collective. So, um, in the, around the middle of the year, uh, Jupiter is going to move in Taurus. And right now, like I've been saying, he is in Aries, which is really good to start something. This is really good uh, initiative energy, uh, pushing forward. And when he moves into Taurus, um, we're, he's going to be looking at how he can expand in the physical realm. So, yeah, that is, <laughs> you know, we have Taurus that is, you know, um, that is Venus, and then we have Jupiter. And these two, when Venus and Jupiter get together, I'm telling you guys, um, we can see some big, uh, some big expansion in Earth, and that will go into, um, you know, our food and our food, our money, um, things like that. Uh, so when you think about the Jupiter in Taurus, you can think about um, inflation. Um, remember, uh, Jupiter loves to expand whatever sign he is in. Now, this is really uh, setting us free from some past cycles. For the past two years, it has been like we have been in this endless karmic cycle. Um, so, you know, things, things are changing. Now, Mercury will uh, spend half of the year in an Earth sign. So, um, that will... Um, um, for all of you earth signs out there, this is going to, um, this will affect you as well, not in negative ways, but, um, it will help, help ground. It will help you with your, um, with communicating in whatever sign he will be in. And, um, so when this is also indicating that, our resources are going to be um, focused on. Uh, Mercury is also our god of commerce. So we can look at that. Um, Mars will finally leave Gemini. <laughs> and, you know, Mars and Gemini is fast energy, but, you know, it can get overwhelming and it can cause too much of a good thing, so to speak. And when Mars moves in Cancer, that's really going to, um, that's really going to change Mars's energy. Uh, that's not a good placement for Mars. Uh, Mars goes forward and um, is about action, and Cancer's more about the emotions. That's going to be um, roughly the end of March. I'll say maybe I think around the twenty fifth when Mars moves into Gemini. But then we have Saturn, and I want to talk about Saturn because this is this is really important. Saturn is our father time. 
And remember, he was part of those seven classical planets and and um, he represented the end, right? He thought um, the people believed that in order to come to earth that you had to pass through Satan. So to pass through Satan would make um, Saturn. Oh my goodness, Jeremy. Satan, Saturn. Oh, That is a slip. Oh, mm -mm -mm. Y'all just keep on laughing because I am too. Oh my goodness. Mm -mm -mm. Anyway. So when Saturn was in Aquarius, that's that constant pushing and pulling this is. Um, and, and Aquarius is associated with society. And Saturn is, you know, um, he, he can he goes into those laws and he places limits. I won't say laws, more like rules and regulation and, and places limits on things. He's um, Saturn is confinement, and it's about restrictions, such as the lockdowns. Now, and this, you know, all the way back to late um, 2019. So, you can see how Saturn has played out these years. So, um, when Saturn joined Pluto... Um, you know, some astrologers have stated that that corresponds to plagues like um, the Black Plague. So we can look back at that and see how um, when Saturn passed Pluto um, when it was in Capricorn back in 2019, um, the end, um, you can see how that come, out, come about. You can see what it would come about um after that and of course now we are not in a plague so it's a different energy now but um i will say that um we are you know definitely moving into something new and you know the all the fixed signs were probably having a hard hard time uh during that process leo aquarius scorpio um taurus uh, you all could have been having a little tough time with these squares that was happening. So now, um, you know, we're moving into mutable. Um, when, you know, Saturn was, um, when Saturn moves into um, Pisces, it's, it's going to ease up a little bit. Uh, and it will take a minute for the energy. I mean, everybody thinks it's supposed to happen overnight. Um, even, you know, we have to understand that, um, not everything is, a, is instantaneous. You know, we live in this instant gratification time and we have to understand that that's our mundane world and our spiritual world are two different things, two different things. So, and when it comes to energy and stuff like that, it does, it takes time to ripple. So, but then, um, um, as, as, like I said, when, when he, um, when he begins to, um, move into the mutable signs, it will be, um, it will be a little bit better. Now, Saturn will also, um, be traveling with Neptune and Neptune is in Pisces. That's his home sign. And, um, I always say that, Neptune is the Hollywood planet. It's the illusion. It's the, it's the surface. It's the entertainment of, um, it's what's going on on the stage in the spotlight and not what's going on behind the curtains. Um, but you know, it, it is associated, um, with our spiritual quest as well. Um, it is, um, uh, a spiritual awareness, you know, um, finding more about, you know, spirituality and connecting with the divine. Um, and it is, um, it, it does touch on music and it does go into video and, and filmmaking, that sort of stuff. Um, and it, it's the big dream, but it also goes into addiction and, um, 
it, it goes into mental illness. And this is very important because we have seen how a lot of the stuff has played out this year. Um, we have seen um, the importance of having mental health care um, and, and what has happened is when we've seen people um, act out in different things and it, it just seems like there is, you know, mental illness is real. It is a real thing and we can't sugarcoat it anymore. We can't, you know, give it a magic pill. We have to heal it from the root. So, but we have, when we have Neptune and Pisces, that's only going to give us the surface of it. It's not going to tell us what's going on because it's giving us this pretty picture that we want to see. Again, we come out of, <clears throat> we come out of, um, making decisions, um, and, you know, not getting, you know, based, you know, with our higher selves and not getting lost by our distractions. So, <clears throat> Um, you know, he also, um, at the detriment, you know, when the detriment means that, that, um, the other, the shadow side of, of Neptune in, um, Pisces is south, uh, is the self-sabotaging ways that we can have. Um, also martyrdom, always playing the victim. Um, this kind of stuff is... You know, um, he's going to be, um, he's going to be passing by this energy. So this is going to be, uh, it's going to be quite interesting because what we have to understand about Saturn is that he brings, um, he brings conform, he, he brings form, right? He comes and he says, I bring form to the formless. Um, the, the, I bring structure to those to, to what has no structure. Oh, it's structureless. I'll take care of this. Um, he is grounded. He's realistic. Um, and he, he, when he, um, when he shows up, Saturn wants sober effects. He wants, um, nothing foggy. Uh, he wants clarity. It, it has to be clear, grounded, realistic. Uh, we're not getting lost in the um, in the mumbo jumbo, and you know where we have um, this actually will touch on conspiracy because Saturn and Pisces that will actually help get um, going by Neptune will um, tap us into those conspiracy theories and and um whatnot but um pisces is about religion and spirituality so we're seeing this dynamic go on now that you know pisces represents um the the age of christianity so it's um the age of pisces so yeah saturn is going to bring a sobering energy to uh, unstable energy he's going to be bringing um he's going to be bringing things down to earth and i think it was um the last time this went on i think it was in 1992 the church of england uh for, first ordained a female minister um in the 60s uh, the what it was it called the um the vatican rewrote um the rules of Christianity, it was something like that, but yeah, um, and you know, Pisces itself, like I stated, it represents Christianity because that is, you know, the fish, they use the fish to represent, um, uh, Yeshua, Yeshua, um, Jesus, um, so this could be about religious, uh, reformation happening, um, you know, Saturn is 30 years. He has a 30 year cycle. So he brings to us down, um, um, he brings down the reality to us. He is that, he's that nice slap in the face that, uh, you know, brings us to, 
Um, he can, you know, another thing is he can make us really uh, wanting to follow the rules. It has to be in the rules, right? It's got to be rules, 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 rules. Follow the rules kind of thing. So um, this could go in and affect our social media, um, our social media sites, um, the video content kind of thing. <clears throat> So, you'll have to um, be mindful of that. Um, I want to cover one more thing, and then I'm going to have to wrap this up. Pluto moving in Aquarius. So, um, he's taking Saturn's place here. I want to uh, remember that. And this is connected to um, the Wall Street scandals that we've had. Um, inflation as well. Stock, stock market crash. Um in Capricorn, uh, Pluto was all about restructuring and rebirth and regenerating, um, you know, and uh, and he was about, and that was about structures of power and money. Um, in 2023, he's, um, he'll, well, by 2024, he'll be through that energy. Because remember, like I said, he'll be moving in Aquarius in March and then he'll go back. Um so, at first, you know, in the early degrees of Aquarius, that is when he's going to go retrograde and go back into Capricorn. And it's going to be giving us a, a glance of what that energy is going to feel like. Because he's going to be in Aquarius until 2024. So, this is, like I said, it's going to be, um, it's the early, early degrees of Aquarius. Then he'll go back. But... When he moves back into Aquarius, this is about power for the people. Pluto is about power, and Aquarius is about the people. So, um, it's, Pluto also is associated with money. So, this is wealth to the people. Um, Jupiter will also be in Aries at this time. So, you know, that's that warrior fighting energy. So, um, we could see laws coming forth, um, lawsuits, I should say, lawsuits coming forth that, um, that's going to, um, uh, take up for people that's going to, um, <clears throat> try to right some of those wrongs that happened when we were on lockdowns. Um, so, you know, the pushback, um, and also, uh, Saturn also indicates that, um, it, that is um, that is a sign of dictator. Saturn means a dictator. So, in Aquarius, if we could see some people coming forward trying to um, be dictators. We can also um, see some uh, breakthroughs in science and um, oil and gas, um, as well as new technology, um, or getting energy from new technology. Um, we can see that coming forth. Um, when, uh, when Jupiter is in Aries, this is the king and the warrior aspect. Um, also, we are going to um, be having a nodal shift. Our, um, the north and south nodes of our moon will be shifting. Um, it will be going, our north node will go from, um, will move into Aries, and then our south node will move into Libra. Uh, this is, um, yeah, they're going from, um, they're moving out of those fixed signs, and um, this will be in July, so this is going to be a new world for sure, um, and that will lighten the energy, um, and also Cancer and Capricorn. Y'all will feel changes as well. Um, Venus will have, um, will have, um, will be moving into Leo and, um, she will be staying in Leo for four months from, uh, June the 5th through, uh, October of next year. So we can really see a lot of movement in the women as well. More, um, more things going to feminine, more women stepping up. Um, next year is going to be an earth element. It's going to be uh, Mercury. Um, it's going to start us out um, going retrograde in Capricorn. So we're going to have <laughs> some um, crazy energy there. 
And um, Gary Clayton, he's really good. He said he's the one that um, he will give the um, earth a different element. And this is earth. So we're going to be looking at that. Um, we're going to be looking at resources, land, money, agriculture, uh, the stock market. Um, now, you know, Mercury is the twi is the trickster, so we got to be careful with that. And we will go backwards a little bit as we're coming into the new world, but it's telling us that there's something that we missed and we need to go back and check that out. Remember, retrogrades are not a bad thing. They help us. They help us do our self-evaluation and they help us see those things that we missed to help ourselves to remember we need to make these decisions that are in higher um that are in um our higher good right we're going into the seven into the mystical year with a seeker of all seekers um we're not there yet we're still there we got the strength to do this so uh let's focus guys all right that is it for the um astrology part uh please stay tuned for the tarot part and let's see what um, the cards have to say.